John Kraft, and Josh Tyler. Good evening, I'm Josh Tyler. Our top fan to stop nuclear missile testing. When asked to comment, Bush replied, and I quote, the, the Vladimir and I about this meet soon talked, uh, he's at conference. Bush did not comment on the missile test for fear of mispronouncing the word test. In a related story, it has been documented in Queens, New York City, that Indians and Palestinians live in harmony. It's, it's that nice they hang out and they even go to lunch together. All 13 of them in the picture. So cute. Well, that's good, because across the world, you know, they're killing each other in massive numbers since the dawn of religion. Well, for those of us that have been worried for the past 60 years, it's official. According to the new issue of the New Republic, Hitler is dead. You know, this puts my life at rest because they had me guessing. I thought he was alive the whole time. You know, Hitler dead? Yeah. Okay, um, Attorney General, uh... My God, how stupid are people? No crap, he's dead. He's been dead. They found him dead. His dead carcass rotting away with a bullet through his head. John. It's not like he was reincarnated as a tree or something. John. If he was alive, you'd probably find him in Argentina where the rest of the Nazis... John, 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 Okay, Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan today at a convention showed everyone that he can count to two. Next story. The New York Times reports that many of the victims from the September 11th tragedy are resentful towards the September 11th fund, which is set up to aid the families. They say that the paperwork is too complicated and long to fill out. I smell recount. Well, we at Weekend Update are concerned with our viewers and have obtained a sample of a letter for you. Just fill out the papers, put it in an envelope, and send it in. This is our team hard at work for the viewers. You mark it personal, I hear, and that gets it through quicker. And, well, it, this one kind of got brushed up during the mail. But you sent it to the September 11th Relief Fund, New York City, New York, 11100. I, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> well, this week in the Middle East, more bad stuff's happening with no signs of stopping. And not to be outdone, as stated before, India and Pakistan are pretty pissed off at each other too. Archbishop Rembert C. Weakland offers a faithful apology in Milwaukee today and invited 20 young boys over to his house for dinner and to spend the night. Wasn't that nice? I thought it was nice. <laughs> oh, that's wrong. Ugh, all right. Who says the world is run by corporations? I do. When this photograph of Ben Franklin, back from the dead, was taken, standing outside of a Starbucks, smoking and enjoying a cup of go. A <laughs> cup of Joe. Who knew? It's nice to see him again, though, isn't it? He looks good. It's very good. Don't want. Don't want. <clears throat> the new Broadway play sensation that is sweeping the nation by surprise and taking no prisoners and is also up for ten Tony nominations and may I say is labeled as the next craze is none other than Broadway's own You're in Town. Hmm, that's, that's interesting. Yes, it does. President Bush still denies ignoring September 11th warnings. Bush said he did everything he was capable of doing in stopping the attacks. This will be the subject of tonight's point counterpoint. Okay, who are we kidding? We all know this man is not capable of tying his own shoe. So what could he do? It's okay, Mr. President. I understand. When you have the IQ of a flea, there's only so much you can do. Just wave and smile. Whatever you do, don't talk. Well, on the other hand, talk. Talk a lot, then people will realize how stupid you really are, and in a couple of years they'll vote you out of office, and everything will be over. John? <clears throat> well, Josh, 
<clears throat> well, at Pearl Harbor, we didn't actually think the Japs were going to strike at Pearl. You know, I was going to church at 7.55 a.m. on December 7th, but I noticed about 350 Japanese torpedo bombers, dive bombers, and countless, a whole mess, countless, yes, countless, and a whole mess of zeros flying over my head as I was eating breakfast on the USS Arizona. Then all of a sudden, I got blown out from my table over into the harbor as I was shot five times by a 20 millimeter cannon. John, you conservative right-wing communist Nazi moron. This had nothing to do with the September 11th attacks and the president completely ignoring warnings of a, an attack that killed millions of innocent people. But you wouldn't know that, John. So you're just as ignorant as he is, you scumbag jerk. You're missing my point, Josh. You're missing my point. You hippie pinko tree hugger, go save a tree and eat your health food, you yuppie. Eat your all-natural cheese curls that taste like cardboard cyanide. Go make your free love and listen to your doobie brothers and your fog hat music. Your Jefferson Airplane, the only band that was worse than Jefferson Airplane was Jefferson Starship. Yeah, well, I cut my grass yesterday, killed it. <clears throat> and I ate a 15-pound sirloin steak for last supper. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, Josh. <clears throat> the city has unleashed its new plan to clean up the water. Yep. We'll have to clean up that. And we'll have to clean up that. And, uh, well, looks like we're going to have to clean up that, too. Sorry about those photos. Those were hard work. People died for those photos. They're kind of not so good. <clears throat> All right, to local news. In a local story, a painted carousel horse attacked an adult man in the park. <clears throat> when reached for comment, the horse said, and I quote, I hope he dies, that fat, sweaty bastard. I'm sick of people overexceeding the weight limit and pretending to be a western cowboy when I'm stuck through a pole like a shish kebab and have to listen to that god-awful music all day long. Merry go round. Horses and fat people. I don't know, man. God. I didn't know they had it in them, but how are you going to live in this world with that? Well, many people are afraid of the weather. There's really nothing to be worried about. I know you're afraid to go out of your houses. The sun bothers you, this bothers you, that bothers you. It's really all okay. See, this is sun. Okay? This is partly cloudy. This is cloudy, completely cloudy, see? It's all right, nothing's gonna hurt you. Now this, this is wind. Now, rain is just water. It sprays at you, it goes like this, and it gets in your face, you get a little wet. It's all right. Then you have lightning. Then there's rain and lightning. Then there's rain, wind, and lightning, which is called a hurricane. If you're in a hurricane, you're as good as dead. All right, Josh. Or let's say, Josh. let's say you're in a tornado. You'll get sucked up, spit at, and hit a brick wall at 100 miles an hour. Josh. Sounds nice? Josh. Well, it shouldn't. Josh. Let's say you're in India. Let's not. Okay. Let's not. Okay, you're in India. They have monsoons in India. It rains for five or six months nonstop. If you're, if you don't drown. By the time the rain stops, you might as well be dead because everything you have is gone! Light off, Kraft! <laughs> God, let's talk about ice glaciers! Alright? Josh. I just heard into a story about the brother! Don't tell me what to do! No! <laughs> Josh, you alright? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, Josh Tyler. <clears throat> now, since we're in the mood, some obituaries for the week. Stephen Stone, the former president of Congress, died last Friday at the age of 84. His family is in deep mourn over this loss and is hoping that he will make it up to heaven with a cheap rubber sole. <laughs> yes, I'll be here all day. That was pretty corny. Okay, John B. King. Irish novelist and playwright is dead at 73. The cause of death was an extreme case of writer's block, which caused his head to explode. And this just in, Attorney General John Ashcroft has been found dead. 
He was apparently mauled to death by an angry mob. Ashcroft's body was found in a dumpster nearby a building in Harlem where Ashcroft was scheduled to give a speech this afternoon. John? <laughs> you knock him dead, Josh. <clears throat> Nathaniel Smith, a glib man of the Bowery, died at 65 this past week. Wow, what an interesting life. Sounds like the crappiest job, I tell you. Not much worse than that. Just on a side note, I used to wear Converse, Chuck Taylors, and A, I never knew who Chuck Taylor was. Still don't. B, those shoes I think are the reason why I have so much trouble with my ankles. No support, and the tongue would, oh, the tongue would, the tongue would always flop over in my instep. You know, and it was so annoying. Sorry, I just had to get out of my system. It's okay. I feel for you. Right here. Now for sports. In basketball tonight, the New Jersey Nets are following their dream to the NBA Finals after defeating the Boston Celtics 96-88. to Well, the New York Knicks are at home trying to find a job they might be good at. Patrick Ewing, when reached for comment on his former team, said, I can't believe they still suck without me. John? Man, he's pretty harsh. Isn't he? yeah. <clears throat> it has been finalized that starting next week, on Tuesday night, the Stanley Cup Finals will be between the Carolina Hurricanes and the Detroit Red Wings. This is Carolina's first trip to the finals, and the sources say that if they lose, they will secede from the nation again. The World Cup is underway, in which 32 countries will be fighting, and I do mean fighting, for football supremacy. I heard of the Super Bowl and such, but I thought football season was over, honestly. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I don't know much about the story. <clears throat> well, in, horsing, in horse racing news this week, the horse war em the war emblem <clears throat> has won its second leg of the Triple Crown. The third leg of the Triple Crown will be the Belmont Stakes. The sport hasn't seen a Triple Crown winner since 1978. The sport is hoping for the Triple Crown winner, and if not, the league will put the horse to pasture and make glue out of it. As you already know, there has been much controversy this week about steroid use in Major League Baseball. Now with us now is special con correspondent Brad Sebuking, who is with Jason Giambi at his home in New York to find out his feelings on this issue. Well, welcome to the home of Jason Giambi, the uh, Major League Yankees first baseman. We're now ready to enter his home and have a little discussion with Jason. Jason! J Jason, you home? Seems to be unlocked. Hey, come on in. Jason. <sighs> hey, Brad, how you doing? You got some stuff on your head. Oh. So, Jason, how, how, how have you been? Pretty good. How are you doing? How are the Yankees doing this year? Actually, we're doing pretty well. I, uh... Whew. I have, um, like 14 doubles so far and 14 home runs, I believe, and 32 runs. Oh, I, don't know. I, got some... huh. I don't know. Pretty good though, pretty good, pretty good. Have you played the Mets yet? Uh, no, we haven't, uh, we haven't started in really yet. Uh, yeah. That's not till later on. That's a pretty good team this year, huh? No, not really. I think they're uh, like 26 and 28 or something like that. They're not doing very well. Yeah. So, Jason. Yes, uh... Are you okay? I'll be okay. We're here today, Jason, to talk about steroid use in the... Uh, Major League Baseball. Uh -huh. what, what are you feeling on it? Steroid, uh... <laughs> Personally, I never, I never bothered to touch the stuff. <laughs> it's a very good idea. It just wasn't really me. So how do you get so physically fit, Jason, if you don't use steroids? Do push-ups! I like to do push-ups. I like to I like to do push-ups. <laughs> I like push-ups. Do you know do you know any other sports players who take steroids? <sighs> um, I think Ken Cam Lady used to. Yeah. That's it. Uh, uh, there's many others, but I like to keep that on the deal. Do you do you voice your opinion to them about their steroid use? Yeah, I tell them that it's not a very good thing to do. You know, it can cause you very many problems. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, very true. <laughs> what are some of the symptoms of steroid use? Jumpiness and <laughs> paranoia and paranoia. Yeah, small testicles. <laughs> Stuff like that. 
That's a reproduction then. Yeah, it, it definitely affects it. Well, Jason, as we can see, you are an ideal baseball player without using any any drugs whatsoever. No, I I pride myself on being that's, very. That's, that's very good. Very. You are a role model to all kids of the generation. Um, Jace, I have a small question for you. Um, wh <laughs> what is that? It's cold medication. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, that's right. That's, that's what I thought. Do you mind if I have some? Oh uh, no. <laughs> um, it's prescription. <laughs> well. I think we'll be leaving you now, Jason. It was a great interview, Jason. It was fun. It was fun. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Okay. And that concludes our wow. interview. <laughs> you okay, Jason? Uh, I'll be okay. Woo! That concludes our interview with Jason Giambi. Yeah. And now back to our anchormen, Josh Tyler and John Craig. Thank you, Brad. Well, in celebrity news, Samuel Jackson the sixth member of the Jackson Five and a Jedi Knight was arrested at his Hollywood house for possession of a lightsaber. That would be funny if the, you know, when the cops came to arrest him, he used his Jedi powers and was like, you will not arrest me. And the cops were like, you will not arrest me. Those Jackson kids, man. <laughs> okay, now it's time for Josh Tyler's Celebrity Corner. We're here today. We're so proud that he's here with Ozzy Osbourne, who has a new hit show, a new album, and a new special with Keith Richards entitled Why We Can't Talk, which premieres Sunday on MTV and VH1. Don't miss it. So here he is, rock legend Ozzy Osbourne. Hey, rock and roll, boy. How you doing? How are you, sir? All right. Uh, uh, I got a new show coming out, um, um, MTV coming out. They offered me uh, twenty million dollars. I was like, I could, I, mean, I could pass it on, man. It was just unbelievable. Really? Okay. Ozzy, how can you explain the success of your new show? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I guess with my kids and Jack and Sharon, it, it just works out great. Right? I mean, people like to see me, you like a family. You know, I, I really, I love my kids. I really do. But it just people don't really understand. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what was your inspiration for the new album? Um, I was listening um, to the boy. Do you, do you like boy bands? Do you like boy bands? Okay, I like I like the boy bands. And I really, I was trying to take off. I was trying to write like love songs. I'm not kidding. Love songs. It was great. I I couldn't believe it. it was come, the album just came out. So I really it. Was it was yeah. yeah. Oh well, what was it like working with Keith Richards? Keith Richards? Uh, I mean, we Keith, we go way back. You know, we're both being from from England. We just connect with each other. It's, it's just like we get. It's like it's telepathy. It's telepathy. I, I couldn't believe it. We get in the studio and each other, we know what we what each other wanted. But, you know, we didn't really have to talk. We just sat across from each other across the studio. And we just tried to brainwave. It was unbelievable, and we knew what. You know, what the people wanted to hear, it was great. It was, it was really great. Well, I'm, I'm sure it was. Now, Ozzy, I'm sure you're sick of hearing it, but I have to ask, what ever made you bite the head off the bat? I mean, I don't know. It was, the people loved it, and it's anything for the crowd, man. It's the people who love you and support you by buying your tickets to your shows, and they, you know, and you want to see a show when they go there. They want to see a show, they want to see me go uh, uh, absolutely crazy. So the people started throwing bursts on the stage and I was just biting the heads off her. And then the one time somebody threw an unconscious bat on the stage and I bit the head off her and I had to get rabish. It was, it was mad. I couldn't believe it. Well, Ozzy, that was a great story. Thank you very much. We'd love to have you back again. All right. Rock and roll. All right. Have a good, have a good night. You too. You have a good night. Well, that guy sure has a lot to say, doesn't he? Well, as many of you know, the new dollar coin has been in circulation for a little over a year now. Here to comment on the coin is anchorman John Kraft. John? Isaac gave me a little present. That was nice. Mm. 
All right, this evening's commentary. Yes, the one dollar U.S. mint coin. I hate that damn thing. It's a government conspiracy against me. I mix Canadian coins all the time with United States coins. This is damn Canada. I think we should just get rid of that country. They have to import their stupid money to our country and their stupid monetary system with the little animals on all their little coins. You know, and that's not all. You know, I hate Canada enough, but the thing, the kicker, is that they put Sacagawea on the one dollar coin. Out of all the women, I'm sorry, but Sacagawea, she didn't do much. All she did, I hate saying this on TV, but all she did was sleep around with Lewis and Clark while they went exploring. <clears throat> if they wanted to put a skanky woman on the coin, why not choose Joan Rivers? They should have chosen an all-American famous woman like Mary Poppins or Aunt Jemima. You know, I hate that just as bad as those stupid glass ketchup bottles in the diners, you know the ones I'm talking about. <clears throat> they never pour. You don't put something in glass that doesn't flow. You know, it, it, it's annoying me ever since I was a kid. Not once has ever, ever, has anyone said to me, I want a nice glass of ketchup. A nice tall glass of ketchup, I might add, too. That's small. You know, people are always like, oh, hit it on the 57. Yeah, that almost works. The 57? I only know one kind of ketchup. They only make one kind of ketchup, but they say 57 variety. I don't know where the other 56 are coming from. The stupid commies, they're lying to us. So what do you do? You take a knife and you jab it through the stupid ketchup bottle, and what? It doesn't work. You wait, you sit and wait for the second coming of Christ. I didn't fight two tours of duty in Da Nang, fighting the man in the black pajamas to come back to America that's filled with glass ketchup bottles. Hand to hand, fighting combat in the jungles for six years, Josh. For six years. Okay, John. Thank you. <clears throat> well, let me take off my glasses. <clears throat> Since today is the 57th anniversary of the Normandy landings in France in World War II, we at Weekend Update feel that it's necessary for this to be recognized. So we give a shout out to those veterans. <clears throat> One last thing is we'd like to thank our sponsors at the Grand Union Family Fresh Markets, who will be having an Operation Overlord picnic at the Small World Park this weekend. Festivities include kids' games such as a live fire recreation of the Normandy invasion of France. Kids will be split up into two teams, Nazis and Americans, and they will fight to the death for control of that beach. You know, Josh, those foster home crowds are the defending champions. I say we get them this year, kiddies. Is that the news? That's the news. That's the news. Good night. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow.